Hello all, I am Dr. Mahesh Mohite, Pediatrician and Pediatric and Neonatal Intensivist from Panvel. Today we are going to discuss about oliguria, a measure of renal health. We need to understand kidney is a very sensitive organ in disease state and every intervention in critical child including the disease itself is a potential risk factor for kidney injury. Volume of urine is a very reliable parameter to represent kidney function and this particular parameter is included in almost all the guidelines, published guidelines today including the rifle and Kedigo criteria to estimate the renal injury and this is easily available parameter may be OPD, may be at house or in the hospital to monitor the renal function. Before we go into that, we need to understand basic physiology. The kidney gets about 20 to 25 percent of the blood volume coming out of cardiac output and a mature glomerulus filters the incoming blood of almost 80 to 100 ml per meter square per minute. Of the filtered volume, 99 percent of solute as well as waters are reabsorbed at various segments of the tubule and only 1 percent of this glomerular filtration is excreted as urine every day. Normally, an healthy, a healthy adult with a normal heart and kidney passes about 1.5 to 3 liters of urine per day depending upon the fluid intake and a healthy child would pass about more than 2 ml per kg per urine, per, 2 ml per kg per hour of a urine. Then what is oliguria? There are clear cut definitions. So decreased urine output due to any cause is oliguria and in the child it is categorized severity wise as when the urine is more than 2 ml per kg it is normal urine. If it is 0.5 to 1 ml per kg per hour it is oliguria and if it is less than 0.5 ml per kg per hour it is to be labeled as anuria. What are the causes of oliguria? Grossly when we see from our medical understanding, they can be categorized as pre-renal that the disease prior to entering the blood entering the kidneys, renal that means the renal injury itself and post-renal which predominantly are the obstructive uropathy. When do we, how do we evaluate all these pathologies on the history? So basically pre-renal conditions will obviously coming with the underlying pathology which are giving rise to decreased volume either true decreased volume of blood or less volume coming to the kidneys due to various causes. So true decrease in the volume will be something like fluid vol volume loss of a gastroenteritis or vomiting, loose motions etc. A blood loss like hemorrhages. It could be a capillary leak syndrome in a serious uh, critically sick child like say dengue capillary leak syndrome or septic capillary leak or it could be due to low osmotic pressure as in cases of nephrotic syndrome where the low osmotic pressure will reduce the intravascular volume hence decrease volume coming to the kidneys so decrease output it also these are true decrease volume but there could be pseudo in the sense if the stroke volume is less or there is any obstruction to the cardiac output then like there is a congestive cardiac failure so that also or myocarditis they will lead to oliguria because there is decreased volume of blood going to the kidneys it could be obstructive shock or it could be a distributive shock like septic shock itself which can give rise to decrease volume to the kidney hence a decrease urine output. It could be renal conditions common being the glomerular pathologies directly the most common perhaps in a pediatric age group is post streptococcal glomerular nephritis or there are many, many complex pathologies like focal uh, glomerular sclerosis or membrane of proliferal glomerular sclerosis etc. Most of those end stage renal disorders with oliguria are due to renal, direct chronic renal injury or the third category being post renal which as I said is because of obstructive uropathy. What to look for in a clinical examination when it comes to oliguria, when the presenting symptom is oliguria, what, how you are going to evaluate clinically. So when definitely you have to look for the features of the diseases causing pre-renal disorders. So you have features of gastroenteritis, dehydration, hence hypovolemia, there will be features of shock, there will be features of congestive cardiac failure, there may be associated features of dengue, a sick looking child with edema, puffiness or it could be a playful active child with a puffiness like nephrotic syndrome. There could be clinical features of renal disorder giving rise to oliguria which will manifest with hypertension, hematuria, anasarca or features of 
systemic disorders which would give rise to renal injury like vasculitis syndromes or arthritis wherein you will think of connective tissue disorder like SLE causing nephritis. There could be clinical presentation of post renal pathology like severe abdominal pain due to obstructive uropathy or it could be a lump palpable, maybe a renal lump or maybe a bladder lump palpable in the abdomen which would hint you towards probably a post renal disease. How do you investigate these cases of oliguria? In most of the cases, causes are identified by good history and a good clinical examination which we have already. So basically look for the features of the renal disorders or look for the features of pre-renal or hypoanemic disorders, they will hint you towards the respective pathology. Investigations are just to confirm the clinical diagnosis. We still do lot of investigations to find out exact pathology and those investigations may involve the hemogram or general hemogram. A plain CBC may hint you towards likely pathology or severe anemia which is normocytic, normochronomic on the background of a chronic renal disorder will be like confirming the diagnosis and there are many others like that in the hemogram. It could be urine examination wherein a cast in the urine would hint towards uh, 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 towards renal pathology or nephritis, could be hematuria also seen in nephritis. Kidney function test predominantly creatinine and blood urea nitrogen will so increased blood urea nitrogen with nearly normal creatinine would hint you towards a pre renal or increased creatinine with borderline rays B1 will be a proper renal condition. So the B1 to creatinine ratio in a naive patient more than 20 suggests a pre renal condition. USG abdomen will guide you towards a possibility or give you hint or diagnosis towards a obstructive uropathy. Then you need to do the condition specific investigations as you are suspecting suppose a dengue as a prenatal cause and NS1 confirm the diagnosis or urine PC ratio protein creatinine ratio would hint you towards a probable direct renal pathology. There could be other investigations like connective tissue disorder investigations to come to a diagnosis towards a connective tissue or systemic disorder giving rise to a renal pathology. Obviously, sometimes you are foxed whether it is a pre-renal or renal pathology then a nephrologist may do for detailed evaluation in the form of fractional excretion of sodium provided the child has not received any electrolytes or fluids or diuresis which will which can confirm these reports otherwise those are the kind of test which can hint you towards whether it is a renal pathology or pre-renal and, uh, and give you further kind of a uh, diagnosis in a pinpoint way. In a possible emergency invest, uh, intervention, is there any kind of anything a general pediatrician can do in his clinic if there is a uh, this kind of oliguria patient presents to or, or he has to directly refer this patient to a nephrology center. Perhaps one very important thing all of us can do is to avoid nephrotoxic drug or nephrotoxic interventions, the common is being the NACID drugs. We are uh, very casually giving mefenamic acid or nemesolides or uh, ibuprofen so for even plain simple paracetamol at least those simple things should be avoided. You should ensure that the hydration status of the patient is good whenever you are giving any kind of a medication so that the kidneys will be least harmed. The radiological dyes, so before doing any contrast study you need to check the creatinine, you need to hydrate the patient well and then subject. So those basic minimum things should be followed. If the child comes with oliguria, perhaps if you are sure there is no kind of critical situation, one may give a small normal saline bolus of 10 ml per kg or 20 ml per kg. If it is because of only hypoalemia, then it will be revived. Albumin in case of nephrotic syndrome, one may try giving albumin followed by furosemide to have a diuresis. In case of nephritis, so egg agent, we may come with a kind of oliguria where a single dose of diuresis can be tried. Then uh, so, so something called as a furosemide challenge is tried when in a critical situation sometimes we give furosemide and check whether he is response to not and then converting that no oliguric patient to non oliguric can be a, a kind of a useful thing in many of the situations. And if you are suspecting obstructive uropathy then a bladder catheterization will definitely help. But believe me these are the common things which can practice and which may work in about 20 to 30 percent of your oliguric patient most of them would require a further referral. So when do we definitely need to refer this patient? Obviously when you are suspecting that child is definitely oliguric for a significant time and is likely to require a nephrology opinion or a renal replacement therapy. 
if you happen to be working in a maybe a center where you have the facility to investigate then the clinical fluid overload situation like congestive cardiac failure hypertensive encephalopathy pulmonary edema or there is a severe hyperkalemia on the background of oliguria or refractory acidemia or symptomatic uremia those are the condition may require renal replacement therapy and they need to be referred to a further center but don't forget before sending that critical child try to optimally stabilize the patient and transport this patient safely so friends to summarize kidney is one of the earliest organ to dysfunction in any critical illness oliguria is a reliable early marker of renal injury based on history and clinical examination usually one can determine probable cause as pre renal renal or post renal renal function test and uag evaluation confirm the cause and potential interventions needed for it and one intervention all can do is to avoid nephrotoxic drugs and nephrotoxic interventions to avoid any further renal injury thank you very much and the next topic is going to be by dr rd khare sir on polyuria often not missed thank you